<laughs> so the first Dark Souls 3 DLC trailer has been released, titled Ashes of Ariando. In this video, I will analyze the trailer itself. I'll also be showing some photos that were released on the Dark Souls 3 Facebook page. And in the end, I will give my final thoughts and speculation on the video itself. So please, sit back and enjoy. I'm kindled one. If you are like us, another forlorn soul, with no place to call your own. Alright, so we arrive in our new world in a completely snow-filled area. The snow's coming down so hard it makes it difficult to see anything in the horizons. The only thing peculiar about this opening scene is if you look to your immediate left in the trees, there seems to be small embers, maybe little even candles, possibly even fireflies, just swaying in the wind. I'm not really sure what that's all about, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Next up, we have two dark, shadowy figures traveling through the snowstorm uphill. Uh, they look sort of similar to the Abyss Watcher's outfit, but they also look similar to an NPC's outfit that appears later on in the trailer, so maybe there's some sort of shadowy organization that's trying to manipulate situations going on here. And lastly, we come to a statue, or at least what looks like a statue anyway, uh, very similar to the Velka statue you find down in the sewers of uh, Dark Souls 3's main game. I thought at first there was a whip on her left side, and it could still be a whip, uh, but after closer analysis, it looks more on the lines of prayer beads, which means she would be more like a nun or some sort of holy figure of some sort. <laughs> Then show my lady flame. Alright, so moving right along, we get our first glimpse at a new boss. We see him several times throughout the trailer itself. Uh, this appears to be the opening cinematic to his boss fight. Pay close attention to the arena that he's in. Uh, it seems to be some sort of giant stone temple of some sort, surrounded on both sides by these giant walls. As far as the boss himself goes, he's some sort of strange creature that whips himself with purpose or motivation. Uh, next up, we see an NPC praying at a cleansing chapel at the Cathedral of the Deep. Uh, this was one of the characters I was referring to earlier, those two shadowy figures that were traveling up that mountaintop. I believe this is more than likely the starting point of the DLC itself. And lastly, we have what appears to be some sort of blind NPC, uh, similar looking to the Firekeeper of Fire Lake Shrine. Uh, if you look at this concept art that was released earlier today, it's actually a child sitting on a particularly large stool. Uh, maybe it's a Firekeeper in training? Who knows? Yes, my friend, Howl at the Moon. Wolfpack enemies confirmed. My only hope is that they're not as annoying as their dog counterparts, but knowing Dark Souls, they're probably about ten times as hard. Do they have any connection or correlation with Great Grey Wolf Sip from Dark Souls 1? Eh, maybe. They could just be regular wolf enemies, but it would be cool to think that they form some sort of legion in Sif's honor, uh, similar to what the Abyss Watchers did for Artorias. And lastly, we see our character player crossing a bridge to a snowy chapel on an opposite island. Uh, this whole DLC, but this part in particular, just screams Painted World of Ariamis. Now, is this the same place? Uh, it doesn't look like it. It's obviously a lot smaller, but they probably have a connection on some scale. <laughs> Alright, so first off we have what could be another opening cinematic to another boss fight, but regardless, it's these strange bug insect type creatures that are sitting around this damp swamp-like area. Uh, in the middle there, they seem to be feasting on some bodies, so you know, typical Dark Souls stuff. Moving right along, we have what, in my opinion, is the coolest part of this entire trailer. We have this giant Viking dude straight out of Norse mythology. Uh, he's rocking the reindeer helmet and this giant hammer axe that completely obliterates the player character. That AoE attack just completely shatters the ground, very reminiscent of the stone soldiers from the uh, Dark Souls 1 DLC. All I know is I hope we get that axe, but speaking of weapons, uh, we're shown a new sword that imbues itself with this dark energy, this dark mist of some sort, maybe even perhaps humanity, but it's still pretty cool. 
cool. After that, we're shown a new miracle that looks like a holy chakra. Uh, you shoot it at the opponent, and it comes back sort of like a boomerang. Looks pretty cool. After that, we have the pleasure of seeing the wolf pack in action, and the player character seems to have a hell of a time fending off all those wolves. Uh, they seem to have something wrong with them, like their fur is falling off around their snout and around their paws if you look closely. Uh, I don't know, it's very strange. Uh, after that, we see a new uh, torch item uh, where the player character is shooting out hot fire at all of the nearby enemies. So that's pretty cool. That's not in the main game, so that has to be a new weapon. Or at least a new sword art of some kind. And lastly, we're shown a new spell that's sort of like this icicle mist type stuff. I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but you know, it's in the game. <laughs> Ashes have come at last. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and finally we see the NPC that was in the cleansing chapel from earlier. He seems to be handing the player character some sort of parchment or piece of paper with blood on it. Uh, this is more than likely the item that we're going to be using to get back and forth between the DLC and the main game. Uh, we then hear a line of dialogue that says, Ashes of Karin at last, or at least that's what I thought it said. The trailer makes it seem as if though the NPC says that line of dialogue, but I beg to differ. It sounds more like it's coming from somebody far more sinister, like the final boss or something. We then see blood traveling along the ground to what looks like a lord vessel uh, that comes back into play a little further along in the trailer. Alright, wrapping off the trailer, we're showing a bunch of old bosses from the main game. Uh, nothing new there. Uh, but we are shown something new in the Untended Graves. Here we see the what I assume is the player character rocking Cornix's armor from the main game. But he uses a brand new pyromancy. He holds up his pyromancy flame up into the air and all these souls spew out his body and hand. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I wonder if the Untended Graves is where that pyromancy is located at. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Alright, and to wrap off the trailer, we get our up close and personal look at the boss that we've seen several times throughout this trailer. And man, does he look pissed. His Lord Vessel, I assume, fills up with fire after uh, that blood connects with it. He then proceeds to burn down half his chapel and soon after that he proceeds to try to smash us into the fucking ground similar to those enemies that we had earlier in dark souls 3 that are in the village they also have bowls and they also try to smash you into the ground i don't know it looks like a pretty intense fight i can't wait for it all right and before we wrap up the video i wanted to share a couple pieces of concept art this one in particular uh it shows the player character in that snowy forest area again uh but then it shows an enemy that wasn't shown in the trailer at all this big tall lengthy grudge looking lady just walking the fuck out that looks creepy as all hell but i can't wait to fight it and to wrap it all up, we get our first look at the PvP arena. What's strange about this is no one has a glow about them as if they're all the host. To be fair, they all could just be wearing that ring that makes you look like the host, or it could just be a concept of the arena itself where nobody's safe and everybody's on their own, sort of like a free-for-all. My only wish is that there's some sort of arena shop where you could go and purchase or buy, like, coveted items. It would make, like, grinding for them a little less tedious. Anyway, overall, PvP arena, I don't really care for it that much, but it's okay. Anyway, that's pretty much it, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my video, and uh, hats off to Namco Bandai and From Software, they really know how to put together a trailer. They give you just enough to get excited for it, and then within that little taste, you can put together a speculation video where people like myself and others can put together their own videos, putting together theories, opinions, and so on and so forth. That's always like the best part about these games to me, is just watching people's opinions and speculation. Uh, October 25th is the release date, which is a little farther than I like it to be. You know, I'd like it to be somewhere in September, but what are you gonna do? Shit happens. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down below about the release date. Do you have theories or speculation of your own? If you do, go ahead and leave it down in the comments and I'll be more than happy to reply with my own. And uh, until next time, peace.